I'm Russell Leidick, and you are watching the Dangerous Fishbowl channel. This is River Bubble, my third fishbowl composition. I started work on it prior to Forest Bubble, both of which being over a year ago. I found a piece of driftwood near my home with a deep hollow inside of it, rather like one would find in an oak tree. I was so fascinated with its intricate network of insect boreholes that I decided to make it the centerpiece. So I caulked it to the inside base, attached an anubia and some moss, and left it to grow. I left the opening to the hollow pointing upward so as to provide a hiding place for the fish, rather like a crater. The power head and the acrylic top and its bumpers are identical to those used in forest bubble. However, instead of mounting the bowl on a plastic pipe, I placed a small turntable beneath it on top of a cork pad. This allows me to slowly rotate the bowl if I remove the power head. I'll show you a demo later in this video. The bowl itself is made of glass. Its size and capacity are similar to that of Jungle Bubble, but slightly larger due to the very narrow circular base, which measures only about 12 centimeters in diameter. It probably holds around 30 liters. The exterior diameter of the bowl and its opening are about 40 and 23 centimeters, respectively. I got the bowl from a store which no longer sells it. However, there are a number of other sources available. And by the way, the largest glass bowl I can find online has a diameter of about 48 centimeters and a capacity of about 50 liters. See the YouTube description for more information. As you'll notice, the fish in here are cardinal and neon tetras. There are a few amano shrimp as well in order to keep the algae under control. I should probably have a pea puffer to keep the snails down, although I don't have much of a problem at the moment. The neons in particular exhibit brilliant colors. I got them from Ocean Aquarium in San Francisco, where the owner told me that they're a German strain. The plants are the same as those in Forest Bubble, with the exception of the Cryptocorni parva at the bottom. It makes a great carpeting plant which grows so slowly that it hardly needs maintenance at all. It's also possible to buy it as a tissue culture, so it's guaranteed to be free of snails. You may also have noticed that the vertical piece of driftwood, which is the one featuring the circular hollow, is covered in vegetation whereas the horizontal piece is barren, as is the rock. The reason is that I've noticed such contrasts in my visits to various freshwater streams. You can have one log covered in parasitic vegetation right next to a freshly trapped tree trunk, which is clean and still retains some of its bark. The same goes for rocks, depending on how and when they ended up in the water. But to be sure, I took some poetic license with this composition, as the natural environment for these fish is a river with coffee-colored water due to rotting wood without any rocks at all. I just wanted to experiment with the juxtaposition. As you might expect of fish who spend their lives in dimly lit waters, it took weeks for them to come out into the bright light. They also turned out to be much more active when I left the camera on and exited the room. But you know what? It's looking a bit brown due to the tannins leaching from the wood. Let's give it a water change and do some maintenance. I've got my towel ready, as well as a fishnet, plant tongs and scissors, a furniture pad for use as an algae scraper, a water spray bottle, an empty water cup, and a wastewater jar. Oops, uh, wait a second, please use a plastic container instead of a glass jar, because otherwise you might smash your bowl. Now, first of all, unplug the power head for safety reasons, then start draining the bowl. I emptied about 75% of the water which is the maximum that should be changed in any case so as to minimize fish stress. I will now use my handy furniture pad to scrape off the spot algae. You can use tissue paper to wipe away the green residue afterwards. By the way, this is the same pad which I use with my acrylic bowl and it doesn't seem to leave any scratches. Now it's time to fill the bowl. Fill up a bucket of fresh tap water and don't forget to mix in the right amount of dechlorinator. I suggest making the new water just slightly warmer than the bowl water which will also minimize stress. As you can see, my hollow provides an excellent water diffuser, but you can just as easily pour the water into a floating plastic cup. The point is to avoid stirring up the substrate. As you fill the bowl, and as the plants expand to fill more space, you might notice some dead leaves or clumps of hair algae here and there. Use plant tongs and scissors to remove them. Be careful what you cut and where, especially if there are fish nearby. Sometimes this process takes so long that the exposed vegetation starts to dry out. If you notice this, use the spray bottle as I've done here. Finally, check out your fish. Are they behaving normally? Or are they hanging out at the surface, gasping for air, or perhaps swimming abnormally? If they look unhappy, add more dechlorinator immediately and do another water change. Temperature can also be a factor. 
We're all done. Notice that I've left a few centimeters of air at the top of the bowl, which is important for reasons that I highlighted in the forest bubble video. If you have to leave the bowl in the middle of a maintenance session, be sure to close the lid in order to keep the animals and the humidity trapped inside. Don't forget to plug the power head back in, although you might want to wait a few hours for the debris to settle. Now, because I have a turntable, I can give you a 360 degree tour. I just had to remove the power head to make this possible, so you'll see the D-wings on the back of the bowl. This isn't easy because I have to turn it manually after removing the top, but I'll do my best to keep things steady. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Thanks for watching.